order to run this centrifuge, we need to turn the timer to hold and just set it at a, a small velocity and start it. The only way that this centrifuge will cool is if it's running. So once we get it down to the temperature that we want, um, you set the red at the overheat temperature, which means that your samples can't get hotter than this temperature, and the blue is your cold temperature. The black is the temperature of the centrifuge at the current moment. So so we're ready to load our samples up. We turn the timer to stop and wait until this dial gets down to zero. The centrifuge will not open until it's at zero. Once the centrifuge is stopped running, we push the door button, which opens up the centrifuge. Unscrew the lid. Use these rubber containers that fit perfectly with our tubes. Make sure that the centrifuge is always balanced properly. These smaller ones we have stuffed with paper towels because they're a lot thinner than the other ones. Once your centrifuge um, is loaded properly, always, always, always make sure to latch the lid tightly. This centrifuge has two um, dials. You need to make sure that the silver dial is turned tightly as well as the black dial on top. Once our rotor is securely in place, close the lid, turn your timer to hold, press start. Always make sure you listen to the centrifuge. If it sounds nice and quiet like this, we know that our, our rotor is properly balanced. Slowly turn the velocity up to the desired speed. How's it going? So on this episode of Vaccine's Lab, we're going to talk about North Korea. I'm just joking. We have our samples from the centrifuge. They've been spinning for uh, 21 hours. We let them spin overnight in the cold centrifuge. And now what we're going to do is discard the supernatant, which is the liquid on top. And if you can see that black dot right there, that's the pellet. And we're keeping all the pellets from each tube. And we're going to collect them in one tube and dissolve in a solution that contains a phosphate buffer, a sodium deoxycholic acid, and bridge 52, which is this compound here, which is a waxy compound that you have to melt down. And uh, that's the next step. So after you spin, collect all the pellets into one tube, and then you're going to add five milliliters of sodium deoxycholic acid and bridge 52 mixed with phosphate buffer. The substance should be kind of a milky um, consistency and not have any clumps. Um, it's important to make this solution the day that you're going to use it because it's got a very waxy substance in it and so it clogs up the filters if you kind of keep using it over and over again.
also want to heat this substance in a hot water bath for about an hour in order for it to go into solution. So once we have it added, we're going to mix it up by shaking and vortexing until all of the pellet chunks are in solution. You can also add additional phosphate buffer to this mixture to help it go into solution better. So your consistency after you add your bridge solution with your pellet should kind of look like this. You'll have a lot of bubbles up at the top, um, but you want to make sure that it's not very soapy and it moves easily. So now what we're going to do is we're going to centrifuge this at 16,000 RPMs for 15 minutes. After you centrifuge, your sample should look like this. So we want to collect all of this in here. Um, try and not get any of the white bubbles on top and definitely not any of the pellet at the bottom. So we're going to put this mixture into a 500 milliliter syringe and pass it through a 0.45 nanomole or Micron, 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 a 4.5 micron filter, which is located there. Yeah. Resisting. Please don't explode. Should we be wearing a protective eyewear? Okay. So it may take the uh, virus a long time to come through the filter. So you can prop up your syringes and Such let them this. slowly filter through. The next step after you've collected all of your virus from your filter is you're going to take some dialysis tubing cut approximately this much tubing um, yeah, what is that, four inches? Approximately uh, four yeah, inches like of that. tubing, and place it into a large 2,000 milliliter beaker to separate the tubing out. Next, you're going to take two clamps and clamp them to one side of your tubing, and then you'll add your virus uh, filtrate to into the tubing and then add two more clips and put the put it into this 2000 milliliter beaker with deionized water. So you'll need to change out the water every about three to four hours and keep it on a light spin on a hot plate. Do not turn the hot plate on though. And that's how you extract it.